Hey guys, and uh, welcome to another edition of Buckman's Model Mania. Today I'm going to show a little bit of progress on the space shuttle group build, the uh, launch tower. Been working on the tower pretty much exclusively over the last few days. Feels like I got quite a bit done, but I realized that, that I've got quite a bit to go still because so far I've cut plastic off of four sprues total. But that's because there are sprues that duplicate themselves. Only two full sprues have been cut apart so far. So let me take you over to the bench and we will uh, start. Uh, I'll start reviewing the uh, parts and how the, they've gone together. It's been an interesting build so far. So the first thing I want to point out on this kit is that there are, so far, there are no... Um, no guide pins. You can see on here, come on, focus. So instead of guide pins on like this building roof, it's got an edge here that you can line up to, but it doesn't help a whole lot when the building is actually this, ends up actually this tall. Also, I'm just, tr I'm trying something new here and I'm not sure if it's working out well because my autofocus is not that good. I've got the overhead light right here off because it creates a glare strip right here. But I think I'm going to turn it back on and to block that glare, I'm just going to lay the instructions here. So, yeah, and you can see here, it that you can see the reflection there because I've got the cutting pad underneath the glass. But that does help a lot, I think, on getting this to autofocus. So here's the uh, base of the tower. And this is a spare piece because there were spru two sprues with exactly the same parts. The parts were these remaining parts here which will be used later in the build and the parts for these two buildings is along with you can see here the uh, main tower parts the inner tower parts came from a different sprue so that's why I've got I've worked on four sprues so far pretty good detail sorry about the uh, sorry about the scan lines pretty good detail on the uh, outside the building little door here same door on the other side I could have put two doors you know because these parts actually line up pretty well could have put two doors on adjacent sides if I wanted to you what I used in here was actually um, the uh, was to me extra thin use that I'm going to start using the Bondini plastic welds more because I was out of them for a while. They both work really well. This has not yet been primered or painted. Doesn't I'm probably going to just throw a really light coat of white over top of it because that's what it calls for in the instructions. And this, like I said, this is the base of the internal tower. This little building here again doors on either side there you can see it once there's paint on there I'm sure it, things are going to show up a little bit better did the same thing what I do is what I did was I taped each wall you know I taped this wall to this wall and then I laid it flat put glue in there held it together and did the same all the way around till I had all four walls it's difficult without any um without any uh, positioning pins on here to get these walls straight. You can see right here, maybe you can't, I can. That you can see it right there where it's slightly off there. But everything pretty much, well, no, it's the same on both sides. Did the best I could, it's, not, it's 99% square once it's actually inside the model because it goes up inside where you can't see it. That's it right here. You can see right here on this step that it goes on the top of the uh, inner tower. It should, um, the issues with it should pretty much disappear. 
like I said, these parts come later. Six of these number five parts, two number six. And this is a spare roof for this. So let me bring over the only one part of the main tower that's not yet connected. These were, these, the tower is an interesting piece to build because what you're doing, again, no guide pins. This face here matches up with this face here on the other three sides. And with no guide pins, what I did was I put, I used instead of the, um, instead of the Tamiya, I used the red tube because it's got a lot more holding power. It's a lot thicker. Use the red tube and laid down a really thin line. And where is my... I don't see it right now. Oh, there it is. Laid down a really thin line using these this glue tip. I never used to use these glue tips, but they are so awesome. They lay down such a nice thin line of glue. It is almost like using some, a liquid glue like this except for you've got the gel and it's so you end up with a little bit more in place and it doesn't dry out quite so quick so i've done contrary to what the instructions say the instructions say to glue two of these sections together then to glue all of the floors inside the sections i decided instead to go ahead and after i tried to make sure to glue three sides of the tower together at one time. Actually, not at one time. It was, took several times to uh, get them all, you know, took a couple shots and a lot of clamps. Switched over to that cam to give you an idea of how tall this thing really is. So, and again, it is slightly off, just ever so slightly, like, maybe 0.3 millimeters on the corners off but it's close enough it's not going to be noticeable on the mo the finished model and so I took the uh, took one side first put um, ah lost my train of thought there for a second laid it down like this let me get the other one so I laid it down like this, making sure that these little, the only guide pins in there, they're not even guide pins, they're guide bumps, making sure that those were to the inside because those actually will support the floors. The floors have a little bit of play up and down. If you don't, you can't really see it on camera, but the, Trust me, there's a little bit of play up and down if you don't have the pins, have them on those pit, they're the pins on the right side. And then once the if the, once they're in there, it actually locks them in really tight. Wonder if that paint is so thick, is too thick to let them actually in there. That is one thing too, is the tolerances are really bad on here. And I just noticed, I actually happened to grab the wrong one. I'm going to have to go back and make sure on the other three there's a um, injection pin mark or injection hole mark right there that was actually keeping me from getting this flush in there. But once they're in there on and on all four sides, I may not even have to glue these. I will glue them because I don't want them to come loose but I might not have to. And it's gonna be interesting to get the inner tower through here, especially I'm feeling here. I have to go through and sand all three, or all 12 of these things on the inside because the edges are a little bit rough. So I laid glue down here, and then I took the second part and I just sat it on top like this. And then I stood it up holding it together I actually held, taped it together when it was laying down. Then I stood it up and I used a few clamps. At one point, all of these clamps were on this structure. 
did one side at a time. I've got a small gap up here that shouldn't matter once paint is on it. It was, and I had it clamped really good. I may have to go back in there with a uh, my uh, blade right here. Let's see if you can see that on camera. Yeah, you see that small gap. I may go back in there, clean out the glue, and re-glue that. If I do that, I'll be doing it with the uh, Tamiya. But I had all these clamps here. First time I did it, bunch of clamps down here. Needed the big clamps to hold because it wants to fall this way because of the weight. So I had actually put on one side here the uh, big clamps. Second, when I did the the uh, third leg here, or the second leg actually, clamps here, clamps here. I actually put the third part in here to make sure it was squared up with itself and clamp clamped it on you know every every floor doing going a different direction just so that this would it would stay square <coughs> and so it was a little bit of work there but I'm pleased with the results other than that one spot like I said I may or may not do something to fix that I don't think in the grand scheme of things especially if I put it from me, if I put it on the back corner, then it's not going to matter that much. No, you're not going to see it. On top of that, I have painted the bottom side, or the top side, sorry, of all the floors. There are six identical floors and then six that have other, other small buildings on them. Comparatively speaking, I like the color. The uh, tower is going to be a darker gray. This is it. Some of you realize will realize that this is blue. It is not a gray. It's actually a blue. And I'm cheating like I do on a lot of them. I'm using rattle can paint. Like the way they came out, and if I can get it focused, you can see the diamond pattern there on the floor. All the floors have that diamond pattern. I like the way that works. I'm gonna paint the bottom side the same color. I thought about light blocking because I will be, where did they go? I will be lighting this model. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is on each floor of the tower, I'm putting four little strips like this, which is going to be really close because these things come you know, if you look, they will fill out pretty close to the whole thing. Going, I'm also at the same time going to be adding, you know, these are pre-resisted to 12 volts. I'm going to re put a 470 ohm resistor on each one, on each floor, so that I can dim them down a little bit. Hopefully doing that, I won't need to block, light block these because these actually the light will be pointing down so i shouldn't be getting any bleed through this direction and if i'm getting bleed through down it's not going to be that big a deal you're not going to notice it in model so like i said i've got these painted i've got to paint the back side these have been in cure for about 48 hours and once once i've painted the other side i'll go through i'm going to have to sand down each edge here so that it will actually stick to the tower and then I'm going to have to sand down here all the edges in there so that one so that the uh, inner tower can go through and two because they're rough I don't want to scratch the inner tower so the inner tower right now has one of these one of the floors on it. I was just I just put it on there to see if it would go on and it is a tight fit I almost couldn't get it on because of the tape here so let me get this back off and there will end up on, on the uh, top and bottom when I glue this there will be at least a um, floor on the top and bottom to make sure it's square because 
the way I glued these two parts, right now you see I've got it taped together, same, same method as I used on the other tower. I'm gonna run a bead of glue down the wider part here, fold it over, and then have to work at it to make sure it squares up. When I did the first one of these, I didn't quite get it square. Let me see if you can see that on camera. If you look, this one is a lot better than it was, It's but it's still not quite square. It was tilted over just about a degree or two more. This one, I did it a different method. This one I glued, I glued without using these. You know, I basically did a tripod thing effect across the uh, sides here to hold it in shape. Didn't get it square. I can get around it. This, These ones, I put one, taped one here and one here, one of the floors on each end. And so it is much more square than the uh, other one. You see, that's almost a perfect 90. This is probably about an 88 degree. So I tape, so I've taped it together on each floor. I'm gonna throw some glue in here, and then I'm gonna push these, push it together. I don't think I can use clamps. I'm gonna use the floors. Push it, you know, it'll push together really well. More concerned with making sure that this seam is good this seam like i said was is going to be interesting at the end and i've seen i've downloaded you know i've seen many different colors for this inner tower i've actually seen many different colors for the outer tower as well i went and found on uh, scale mates the old original instructions for this kit from 1987 because the instructions i have have the uh have it the floor white the tower gray the inner tower gray, white, the uh, building white, and then the roof of this roof here being brown. I like the instructions for the old kit where these are white, These, this is white. These are a bluish gray. The outer tower is gray and this tower is red. So I'm gonna paint this red. Before I glue this together though, I thought about it after I had taped it. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do my best to just blacken, you know, throw some black on the inside of the tower all the way up and down. I'm not going to spray paint it. I'm going to brush paint it just because I don't want it to be, you know, over spray red and white in there. I want it to be a solid color as much as possible. I'm going to get red over spray inside there no matter what I do because of the, uh, because of the, um, holes here but I also am not going to spray paint this before I glue it because that I want to have good solid surfaces here once this is done once this is painted or glued and painted all the you know the tower pieces the tower floors will go get slid down very gently trying to uh, avoid scratching the paint because I know it's liable to be very fragile paint, but if I do scratch the paint, I can go back with the brush since I'm going to be using a uh, acrylic craft paint. I can go back and touch it up with a brush. I'm not going to seal this with future or anything because the tolerances are so tight. I want to be able to get this to slide in there without a huge amount of effort. And then um, I think, what else do I have on this? I think actually that's about all I've got so far. A lot of work. I mean, this is several days of work. Oh, there that's the one thing. Once I, it was kind of entertaining, I, you know, kind of as a joke. I kept the central pieces because what the sprues are is, you can see it here. This was one side of this. Actually, was this? Yeah, this is one leg on a sprue. But it's funny the way the sprues are set up because you've got um one leg and then another leg and then ninja th plastic ninja throwing stars in the center holding them together i cut these off they're going to go in this sprue box but i thought it was just funny the shape that these came in 
So, I'm on, I mean, that's the progress so far. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy this build series. You know, um, I'm having a good time with this model. It's a model I've wanted for about 30 years. Even when I wasn't doing models for a good portion of that, I wanted the, thought this model was the coolest model ever. It is, a, I'll tell you right now, I looked around the box, it's a skill level five, and I'm adding lights to it, which makes it a skill level six or seven. Where are they? I don't remember where I put them, but I did find some, there they are. That was the one thing I wanted to show. One more thing I wanted to show. So I was looking at, let me switch back over here. So I was looking at these street lights. There's 40 of them and they're not, they're not correct. It's, you know, it's a little ball up here and everything. And I was like, I don't like that, especially cause I'm lighting it. I don't want my street lights to be just not lit. Thought about cutting them off, just doing putting an SMD on there. Just didn't seem like any good way because the, the wires would be obvious on there. <clears throat> so I went on Amazon, and I think it was Mark Shu that made the suggestion. And I was like, that is a brilliant idea. Went on Amazon. These are very fragile. Some of them are off. Some, I tested one. But I went on Amazon, and here is what I found to replace those. I can't... I can't cut the tube, because if I cut the tube, I'm going to end up cutting the wires. This is actually a, two tubes, and I pushed this one down as far as I could in here. It's still about twice the height of the original in the kit. But what I may do, you know, I'm not, I'm not concerned that it's going to stick out, stick forward too far. You know, my kit, my rules. <laughs> may still pull the second sleeve off of here, but I, since it's, um, it is on a building where these all go, all depends on the uh, how wide the uh, walkway is. But I can set this on the building, you know, drill the hole, set it on the building. Right now, it would be way too tall. But I can pull the part down inside and make it a decent size. Can't fix how far out this sticks. These light poles are supposedly... They're supposed to be 144th scale or up to 160th scale. So they should be in scale. It's just that I think some of the parts on here are a little bit smaller than they should be. Or those were, you know, those quote unquote street lights. You know, they look like street lights. They could be, could have been custom made for the launch tower. So. Back to my outro. <laughs> so, hope you're enjoying this build. I am having a blast. I'm doing what I always do when I light a kit. I take a very simple kit and I complicate it, but I enjoy it. It come, I come out with some really good looking kits that way. So, I'm gonna call this a stream. It's uh, Sunday morning, so we will be doing a live stream later on today. No. It'll be live stream number four if you're curious on the timeline. Like, like the video if you like if you enjoyed it. If not, fine. And if you feel like you feel you need to do a dislike, go ahead. Subscribe if this is the type of content you'd like. And um, stop by HLI. That's where the, I'm hosting this group bill at, and it is a great boot bunch of guys. I will be posting links to HLI and to the group build in the uh, video description. So, hope you have a great day. Great eat. Great. Hope you have a great day. Have a great week next week, and I will uh, see you in the next video.